Well, December is full of key dates associated with the demise of Studebaker automobile production here in South Bend. For instance, word of a South Bend plant closing broke on December 9th, 1963. And the last car rolled off the assembly line on December 20th of that year. Mark Peterson is live in the studio now to mark the milestone, Mark. You know, with the passing of another year, the closing has now been in South Bend's rear view mirror for six decades now. For some, that is still not enough time to dull the pain or fill the void. That's the last car in Studebaker, the Lark. As a child, Ron DeWinter was surrounded by Studebakers. As an adult, he followed in the family footsteps and made them. Well, you know, when I turned 18, I was working at the original Pancake House, I remember, and my dad came to me. He had to be 18 to work in the shop. My brother worked there, my brother-in-law. Ron's father put in 35 years of the plant. Ron hired on just a couple of months before the shutdown. The sadness of my dad, you know, I, I think I remember my dad crying twice. He was a very quiet man. He cried when my brother blew the engine on that 53. <laughs> and he cried when Sudebaker's closed. He put his head down like that and cried. That's hard for his son to see. And I think he took that to his grave, probably. For generations, Studebaker was a constant in South Bend. They put countless meals on the table, presents under the tree of Christmas. It was, you know, fathers and sons, entire generations worked at the Studebaker plant. In fact, I've heard former Studebaker employees refer to it as working at Studebaker's, the possessive, like Mr. Studebaker was still there handing you your paycheck at the end of the week. It all started in 1852. A couple of Studebaker brothers opened up a blacksmith shop in South Bend. I've had my own shop. And I work for others. The shop grew to become the world's largest builder of buggies and wagons by the turn of the century. By 1920, the company turned all of its attention to the so-called gas buggy with the Studebaker family members handing over the reins. The Studebaker family was really not involved with the company much after uh, they went public in the early teens. When the Studebaker Corporation was formed, uh, they needed extra capital. Outsiders came onto Studebaker's board, money and interests, uh, Lehman Brothers, uh, uh, other banking houses got on Studebaker's board, and the family essentially withdrew from the company at that time. The road was often a bumpy one. This parade in 1935 celebrated Studebaker's emergence from the Great Depression and about with receivership. January 1962, Studebaker took the most spectacular strike in its history. Not the kind of thing Sherwood Egbert lived with very easily, that's for sure. One day, he arrogantly crossed the picket line in his Mercedes-Benz. What happened is that decisions were being made as a corporation and not as a community company. While Studebaker arguably managed to make some of the best-looking vehicles on the market, it could seldom make a profit. Well, for Studebaker, and we should really look at it, back in 1950, Studebaker was producing almost half a million cars and trucks annually. They employed 24,000 people in South Bend. Fast forward to 1963, employment is down to about 7,000. Uh, Studebaker had not made a profit uh, for many years, in fact, from 1953 to 1963, they turned a profit just once, and that was in 1959. So, you know, the handwriting was on the wall, but still, Studebaker had come back so many times previously that there was no reason to believe they wouldn't be able to do it again. And do you take it out quite a bit? What kind of reaction do you get? Oh, I get, uh, you know, people blowing horns and giving me a thumbs up and waving, and it's, it's fun to drive. While Studebakers are no longer being made in South Bend, they're continuously being restored and appreciated by car collectors from around the world. Why'd they go out of business? I said, hey, take an old Studebaker set it and sign an old Chevy at the same year and ask them which one looks better. The Studebaker wins hands down, always. Did they, were they put together any better than Chevys? No, they're probably about the same. But they always did something a little different, Studebaker. They didn't build them. If Chevy was building a square car, Studebaker's made a round car. <laughs> and what did they buy? The Chevy. <laughs> it's not that people now hate Studebaker. They still have kind of a love affair with Studebaker. Maybe they dislike the management at the time and how they handled the closing. But as far as the, the, the products, um, still, People really collecting them, driving them, loving them. 
And to speak to that, uh, we showed segments of the documentary, Less Than They Promised, about Studebaker. And when they roll the credits uh, and the, the music comes up behind it, it's I Can't Stop Loving You <laughs> by Ray Charles. Uh, Studebaker actually founded 13 years before uh, the city of South Bend itself. That's amazing. Mark, and, and just about uh, every family in South Bend had some connection it's to the Stu Baker, whether they worked there or owned one. It's the Kevin Bacon thing, you know. There you yeah. go. Seven degrees of separation. Yeah. Mark, uh, very good work on this one. Thank you very much.